Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to do a really fun, really easy project, which is to make a trunk cover for your vintage 911. So I'm on the way to the Rent Sport Reunion in Monterey, California, and I'm working on my new tool bag. The problem was is that if I want to reveal the tool bag to people and open my trunk, it's kind of old. It's not been completely redone. Um, it doesn't look that great. So I thought, why don't I try to modernize my trunk area by creating a kind of modern looking trunk cover like you would see in a modern car. So to do this, I'm just gonna use some quarter inch plywood and some carpet I have around and custom fit the, uh, the panel. Um, I think it's gonna be pretty easy. So let's just get into it. There's not much to this one, so let's just jump right in. So the idea is we're going to make this thing ourselves using these three items. I have some scrap cardboard that I'm gonna to use to make the template. I've got some wood. It's always nice when we have wood. Uh, this is quarter inch. Uh, I think it's birch. I don't really know. Hold on, maybe I'll tell you. Uh, it's just quarter inch plywood. So I have a sheet of that. Uh, and I have this gray felt liner, kind of like you'd see on speaker boxes. So I have a whole roll of this that I'm gonna use. The downside to this stuff specifically is that it, uh, man, it really attracts, like if you have leaves and the leaves get in there, it's a bummer. So I'm gonna have to bring a, a foam roller everywhere I go, um, or rather a uh, lint roller. Bring a lint roller everywhere you go. So I'm just gonna mock it up in cardboard. Then I will uh, lay that cardboard over the plywood sheets, cut it out with a band saw or a jigsaw, and uh, use some spray adhesive to throw that black on. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably <clears throat> use separate pieces of wood and I'll probably stack them this way. So it's like one there and then one there and then one there. And I'm gonna do that because that way I can put some gaffer's tape on the uh, top side before I put the felt on, uh, the, the, uh, the carpet on, and that way it'll be foldable. So I'll probably end up putting it together, I may spray the underside with black, but really who cares. And, um, and then I also may take some um, foam material, like uh, adhesive foam, like you'd use on a, a door jam, and put it underneath to stop anything from rattling and sort of keep it all in one place. So, let's do some cardboarding, shall we? All right, so that is a pretty good rough template. I've got this thing set kind of to where I want it. So I'm pretty happy with how this template looks. And uh, tomorrow when the stores open, I will really tape this thing all together. And um, I'll be ready to lay it on top of some wood, stack the wood together and cut it right on out. All right, here we go, I've got my wood. I've got basically some one inch ply or one inch, quarter inch plywood. And uh, I've got my template sitting over it, so I'm gonna trace it. And this is gonna be loose. I'm gonna do a, a, a loose trace. Then I'm gonna cut it out. I'm gonna size it up in the car. And if I'm happy with how it looks, um, glue it up and call it a project. All right, now I've got the uh, pieces all measured and I'm just gonna cut them out here with my jigsaw, which is a little ghetto, it's broken. So it's kind of all over the place, but um, I hope it works.
All right, rough template is ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna actually have to reverse my car and move it and then turn it around. This is what I've got, which I'm pretty happy with overall. It's a snug fit, but I think it's gonna work great. The reason why I did it in multiple pieces is because I wanted it to be able to flex uh, with the car, and that is exactly what it's doing. Okay, so what I have left is I just want to clean up this curve a little bit. This curve is pretty wobbly when you see it. So I'm going to clean this up until it's nice and smooth. I think I might try to hit it with the, um, the, the jigsaw again just to get this bump off right here. And then see if I can smooth it out with my round bit. So let's do that. It's time to hit the seams with some black Gorilla Tape and keep everything stable and then I can uh, glue the carpet on. I've got here my spray adhesive and I have my carpet. This is the same carpet they use for speaker boxes. Uh, the only downside to this, which I don't love, is it really attracts like sawdust and stuff so it's hard to keep it really clean. It'll work for now. I'll just bring a lint roller um, and uh, I'm just gonna cut it to size and then Shake this adhesive up and hit it and quit it. So this has a good side and a bad side. This is the underside. So what I'm going to do is throw that here for now. Make sure this is relatively clean. Hit the adhesive on it. using a well-ventilated area, like this closed garage. Now, the mistake I just made is I should have actually sprayed the fabric first, because it would have been easier. Um, but I'll just lay it out on the ground. You won't be able to see what I'm doing. With contact adhesive, you have to spray both sides. And then once the glue dries enough, and it should be tacky, they say that you should be able to put a knuckle into it and it should be sticky but not pull the glue off. Um, if you can do that, then it's good to bond. So I'm going to bond the underside, the flat side first, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the edges and fold the corners and do all the cutting and, and that kind of thing. Check this out. A little art action. So I'm just going to let this dry for a couple more seconds and then I will lay it on and flatten the carpet. All right. One thing I'm not doing is I'm not railing on it because I don't want a lot of the tape to show through. You know, the tape I just put on, um, I don't want that to show through. So I'm not really pushing it down really hard. Um, just hard enough. So now comes the tricky part, which is, I'll turn the camera down here. The tricky part is trimming. So we're going to flip this whole thing over and now it'll be glued together as a unit, which is awesome. And so what I've got to do here, what I like to do typically is I like to work from the corners. This thing's got a little bit of give, so you can really stretch it. You want to hit the adhesive so it hits here, so on the wood and on the carpet, um, and let's let that dry a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to cut around this with a razor blade and get it relatively trim, like just begin some of the, the bigger cuts, and then I'm going to work from the corners, really pull these corners tight uh, as I as I bond this together. 
So here's a closer look at what I've done here. So I've sprayed on the wood and on the fabric. Now I'm gonna go around with a razor blade and trim off the big major pieces and then work on uh, fitting this carpet on here once it gets tacky enough. All right, so as I'm doing this, this is really sticky. So I like to pull the corners first and get a nice pull on there. And then with a good pair of scissors, which I don't know if I have right here, um, I'll cut this corner like this. And then that sits pretty darn flat. Then I can just go around here and hit these edges. And then once I get to the next corner, I do basically the same process, which is I do the corner first and pull it nice and taut and center the middle part like that. And then I get the inside nice and tight. Like that. And then I have basically these two big loops that pop up that I can then trim. Again, if I had a great pair of scissors, it would be easier. But that gives me a nice, pretty flat corner. And for this inside arc, which is part of uh, this section, the, the inside here, I'm going to have to make a few relief cuts. So I like to do those. Um, I like to do these sort of like at the sharpest part of the curve. But you can do a few of them. Don't be afraid to do a few cuts when you need to. Um, I've got another outside corner here, so I'm gonna do the same move. Pull from the center and get that thing to glue. And then, again, a lot of this extra stuff, I'm gonna be able to trim off in a few minutes. So this thing, I can feel this needs a relief cut because it's pulling really hard. So I'm gonna give it a relief cut right there. Make sure that pulls and lies flat. There's another one I feel. This one I might be able to get away with. Yep, so that's good. That went well, this looks great. So here's a close up of what all the corners look like. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just gonna trim with a razor uh, all the way around the outside edge here. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I haven't looked at the other side yet. This was probably the most challenging piece here that had a little a couple of bumps. Um, you know, one thing about black is it shows everything. So, but I'm not worried about it. This is not like, this is not gonna be a concourse piece of uh, kit. This is just a little something that I'm going to do now to uh, make it a little nicer looking in the trunk and make it easier to pack luggage and things like that. All right, so I'm grabbing a fresh razor and I need new razors. That is really the bottom line. I'm grabbing one and just doing about a half inch. Okay, we are neatly trimmed now on all the corners. Let's see how it looks flipping it over. Oh yeah, it feels solid. It feels great. It feels just like you feel in a, in a car. Now let's just see if the darn thing fits. One thing I might do as well is put some uh, scotch guard or something on this. I might spray it because you know it's going to get hit with some stuff. Even the frunk. Here's the finished product. I think it looks great. It's 
It's got flexibility so that it might move with the contours of the trunk. It looks pretty pro. So let's see how it looks inside the car. There's the before. I mean, that's not terrible, right? But let's see, let's just see. If you're wondering why I gave so much room for this thing, there's a bump here that I had to get around. So I didn't want to just sort of intricately carve it. I wanted to give it a little room, but it's okay. I don't mind that. And then I'm going to figure something out for those. But overall, I am really, really pleased with that. I think it just completely transforms the trunk. I think it cost me uh, $30 for the wood and I ordered the carpet from Amazon. I used it for another project, so I had that as scrap. That was it. As predicted, not too tough. Kind of an easy project. Uh, it really looks fantastic. I am so stoked with how it turned out. Um, I will do something about the air conditioning lines. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. I may make a little box to sort of cover those up and then I should be good to go, but that was it. Anybody could do this project. This is a this is a, a half a day. Uh, I think the most difficult part is the upholstery. And if you follow the directions I gave, which are um, make sure you let the contact adhesive tack up first, and then do the corners first, like really pull and stretch with your thumb so it's right in the middle of the corner, and then work the outsides of the corner in. Once you do that, uh, it's it's pretty easy. Uh, if you have to make relief cuts, you'll feel the tension. You'll feel where the, the fabric really wants to pull. Then you just make a little cut there. But otherwise, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm really happy with how it looks. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, it's, it's a brand new channel. So if this is the first video you've seen, I would love if you'd click that subscribe button and maybe the little notification button. And I'll do more cool projects for your vintage 911. I'll see you next time.